All right, what I like to do is we take a live shrimp. Like I said, we're using that number six hook, treble hook. I can slide him, right, slide that hook right above that horn. So you're not killing him. Just barely got him hooked. And let it sit out just like this. That light hooks what it, what it allows allows it to do with the big leaders for that shrimp to actually float up as you popping that weight up off the bottom. And as you bring it up off the bottom and rolling that thing, the shrimp is steady popping up. You know, and the hook's not holding him down, so it gives it the presence as to say, you know, it's just a, a shrimp swimming through. And that's all it does. Sliding cord. A lot of times, if you pay attention, you can uh, catch the bigger ones that are going to be on the sliding cord. Especially once that tide starts going, starts moving that cork around, catch a nicer fish on that cork. I'll show you how to rig that up too. Alright, this is how you kind of rig up the sliding cork right here. A little quick deal. You can buy these little pieces of yarn and get them at any tackle shop. And they come, they've got real long ears on them. That way you can pull it tight. But then once you pull it tight, you go ahead and clip it off. Makes it a little bit easier to uh, reel into the reel. So that's what's first is the yarn. And I got it set about 12 foot deep right now. So you can reel it through the reel like so. Then the next thing you put on is the little bead. Right here there's a bead. It comes with the uh, packages of the yarn you can get. We carry it here at Dockside also. The yarn stops the bead, then you put on a cork, the bead stops the cork, then it's your basic Carolina rig. Whatever size weight you want, depending on how fast the current is, right here it's just a little 3 8 ounce egg sinker, and then you swivel, then about 2 foot to 3 foot a liter, and we almost always use treble hooks, that's a little number 6. And that's your uh, sliding cork rig right there, it's great for fishing. 6 to 15 foot of water, especially when there's some snags on the bottom. Sliding cord. Uh, we always use it with braid. That way because the uh, that piece of yarn I showed you in the reel, it won't slide up and down the braid once you tighten it. On monofilament it'll slide, so make sure you use braid. Okay, right now we're fishing the uh, about mid-lake on the track. Uh, we have a strong incoming tide while the tide's actually starting to pick up right now. What we like to do is kind of drift down the bridge, throwing a sliding cork or a Carolina rig, put a shrimp on it until we start popping a few. Then what we'll do is we'll pull up to the bridge, and inside the bridge there's a little crevice where you can take your anchor or a little spike and jam it in there, pull up kind of tight to the bridge. That's why you don't have a lot of slack kind of pulling on it the whole time, right? Set your anchor just like that versus putting it down at the bottom where there's a lot of debris, all right, and you end up losing your anchor. It's a lot more simple. Probably more effective too. So we get enough fish in the water. It's a nice way to start off the day there. Look, it's in the shrimp season now. So most of our fishing is going to be Carolina rigging, live shrimp, and using a sliding cork. That's what Chris is using right now. But, put this fish up. Or you want them fresh right here in the red color. Right here. Let me show you how we're rigging this. I'm just fishing the matrix shed on the Carolina rig. It's real similar to what people around here call a rucker rig. It's just your three quarter ounce egg sinker to the swivel and a real long leader. And what I like to do is thread the line through the matrix shed and then extend it right there with that treble, number six treble on it and you just pop it off the bottom. Now what you can do if, if Chris starts catching with live shrimp real quick, I can rip this off, just put a shrimp on there so I'm ready for both. But this is a real effective way once you get the trout on a roll with the shrimp. You might not have to use as many shrimp, you just use this matrix shed on there just like that. All right, this is the size of the fish that you want to be looking for out here on the trestle. The bigger the shrimp, the bigger the trout. Put one of the bigger shrimp on. Got about a 20 inch trout here. This is what we're looking for out here right now. Nice. 18 to 22 inch trout. It's the size range that you're really hoping for. You get on a nice run of these, you're going to fill the box up quick. 
Make it a trout. Make it a shrimp. Make it a trout. Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is our how-to section again from Dockside Live. I'll tell you what we're fishing. We're fishing a simple Carolina rig. Uh, we're using a three-quarter ounce little round egg sinker here. Let me go ahead and unravel this real quick. Um, three-quarter ounce little round egg sinker. A little barrel swivel. Mine is my swivel is kind of heavy, and the reason it's kind of heavy, I use a, a, a big one because a lot of times when you use a smaller one, if you don't use a bead, it'll get stuck in there. So, giving me about on here, I probably have 24, 18 to eight, anywhere from 18 to 20 foot a liter with a number six treble hook on it. And that's the equipment of choice. Well, that's normally how it goes, folks. <laughs> well, you can say how. <laughs> you can say. I mean, it was a big old flat daddy. With the amazing fall run we had on Flounder last year around October, November, you know, it, it, it makes sense for them to still be here. I mean, it never got cold enough for the flounder to leave. We're still fishing on the north end of the trussel. Um, and actually probably lost about a three pound flounder on it. You know, and you can probably come out to the north end of the trussel and do the same thing. And you actually don't, like I said, Chaz was explaining earlier, you actually don't need the live bait to do it. Which you could do, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take that matrix shad and rig it like a Carolina rig or a Rucker rig and we'll kind of go down the bridge until we find, get a couple of bites and we find some fish. Once we find them, then we'll start pitching shrimp at them to get them on the roll and to keep them going. All right, we're, we're just finishing up on the track right now. We're actually going to check a few more spots in the lake. You know, it's very important to kind of bounce around and check more spots because, and the reason being is because if the, if the lake dies as far as on the trussel, that bite dies, you need a secondary backup plan, right? I mean, we probably 25 or 30 trout just like this. I mean, a beautiful trout. And this bite is going to last all through May, all through June. After June, what's going to happen is those, those fish are going to move out towards Lake Catherine and Lake Bowen. All right, but I mean, you can launch right here at the dock. You know, five minute boat drive. Probably some beautiful fish just like these. And remember, you want to use, make sure you got one pole Carolina rig with about two to three foot a liter on that number six treble. And have you another pole with that sliding cord. Some days one's way more effective than the other. You got to have both of them rigged. And that's what you're going to catch. That's what you're looking for out here. We like to trestle on the incoming tide. And a nice southeast wind, that's the best time to come out here for May and June. Don't be surprised if you catch a few flounder, drum, and redfish too, but this is the primary fish. Alright. A little flat, Daddy. Hey, we moved locations. Um, the wind kind of picked up in the lake. What we did was move, what we did was move to the back of Lake Shore, Lake Shore State. It's a good place to hide out when the wind picks up or you're trying to wait the wind out or weather out to try to get back into the lake. You know, you always catch a couple quality fish, a couple of flounder. I mean, there's redfish in here, there's a sheephead drum, and there are a lot of special trout. This is another spot right here that's underutilized in the lake, especially on bad weather days when you want to get out of the house and still do it. what they left us on the old twin span. This has been a great little hot spot to get away from the boats, the boat pressure, and fish the old bridge piles of the old twin span. This is the what's going to be the old pier. So until they open it, if you had to fish this with live shrimp, just keep that bait along all of the little uh, bridge piles that support the bridge. It's a great little spot. They got some real nice trout in here too. Nice little red. Good trout. Good nice trout. Oh, that baby. Look what you 
Let's see his fish do over here. I used to do it on the twin spin when we had all of it. We used to fish it every day. The fish get right up on the poles, they get between them. So you gotta throw that bait, or you throw in the matrix shad or lob shrimp. You gotta throw it right by the poles. They got some real nice fish in here right now. This is where we uh, fish for the uh, LA Saltwater Series Trout Tournament to catch one of our layer, layer fish. And they got a lot of three to four pounds in here. Just gotta get them out them poles. When you set the hook, pull them away from them poles so they don't wrap you up in them pilots. Caught this one on a Carolina rig. Live shrimp, that's probably the best fish of the day. Got a three and a half pounder right there. Nice fish. My fence is spot up. Alright. Alright, now that we're ending the near near the end of our trip. We decided to go check under the new twin span. You know, speckled trout is always our first fish of choice, but one of the most underutilized, probably one of the best tasting fish in the lake. And what the lake is probably more known for speckled trout and redfish, but let me tell you something. If they put the new twin span up, it's been known for these views. And if you're missing out, if you're not fishing for these, at least let me get the trawl boat off. At least at the end of the day, trying to put your, you know, five or ten of these in the box, you're missing out. This is one of the best tasting fish in the lake, the black crumb. Right here, baby. And there's tons of them on these big piles here uh, in the lake on the new twin span. I mean, there's tons of them, you know. Get you a box of these, you know, 16, 18 inch fish, pull them out. They are just as good as redfish, make no mistake about it. It's not all about quality, you know, I mean, obviously you're out here trying to chase buckle trout, you know, and it may not always come, turn out as planned, but the variety of fish that you have in the different locations located in the lake on the trussel, on Highway 11, on the new twin spans, just abundance of fish out here, you know, you don't always have to stick towards the trussel um, to catch fish, there's just an abundance of fish everywhere in the lake, you just need to take the time, you know, and just Put the trawl motor down, put the anchor down, and you go fish a few spots and you'll find some fish. I'll guarantee you find some fish. Just pop the sheep head in the boat, caught him on plastic. You know, I mean, it just goes to show you that the fish are everywhere, they're ready to eat. Yeah.